Let's talk about the note to Bernie Sanders from the Southern Democrats. And I know, Anoa, you are, I don't know if you're finished or if you want to even talk about uh, the response part. Um, I'm going to let you take the lead on this and I'll just give some commentary. You go. We are not, we are not finished. And when I say we, there is a conglomeration of us from the Southern states represented by those. Basically what happened was the other day, um, a group of folks, Georgia, Louisiana, I think it was Florida, Georgia, Louisiana, and South Carolina, uh, forgive me if I'm missing a state. Um, some of them are Democratic chairs, some of them are just high-ranking Democratic officials from those states, wrote a letter to Bernie Sanders. Basically, they don't they don't appreciate the, the language used by the campaign talking about the southern states. They don't appreciate um basically how they've been discounted, you know. Um, and they, they, they ultimately, you know, somebody was saying, Well, I just feel like they were telling him to tone it down. Um my problem with these letters or these statements from DNC operatives to Bernie Sanders about what he is and isn't doing it is completely disingenuous about the state of the Democratic Party. For mm -hmm. one, uh, what is happening in our state Democratic parties locally. And um, yeah. it also ignores the, the, the part they played in, in minimizing the potential for real competition in this primary process. Of course, they don't want a real competition, right? These are also people who have signed on, supported, endorsed Secretary Clinton. So they are, they have, they've hooked onto her wagon, so to speak. And so when people like, and, and, and I can admit that I'm one of those people who have said, I don't really like the, well, those Southern states are conservative anyway, argument from the campaign. Right. I personally don't like that, that argument from the Bernie it campaign. It was sloppy. I th that's what I feel. But at the same time, this response and this, this false, because, I think false outrage needs to be like it should be outlawed. It should be illegal, man. Like it's definitely one of one of the things we end up having to talk about all the time, right? Because I really think this is false outrage at this point. Because we're so we're two months from southern competitions. Like why this letter is coming out, it's really ridiculous. One. Two, these are some of the same states and people who have argued so far to the right yes. of Bernie as to why people should not vote for him. Like you know, Clyburn arguing that people, you know, there, free stuff. there yeah. are no free lunches, right? Free lunches. Yeah, there right. are no free lunches. You know, uh, free education is not possible. You know, you had John Lewis saying similar things. You had our mayor here in Atlanta, Kasim Reed, you know, basically blasting anybody and anybody who would think they would dare to stand against the almighty Clinton machine. Yep. So now have this letter written out of hurt feelings supposedly right mm -hmm. it's laughable so um the next hopefully we can pull it together in the next day there will be a response for many of us who have organized and engaged and support the center senator here in at least focusing on south carolina georgia florida well, i let, mean let me say this about one thing i don't like about bernie sanders dum 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 <laughs> the one thing i don't like about bernie is that he is not listening to the false outrage. Now that's a good thing, but it's also a political bad thing because he doubled down on the Southern comment in the debate. Yeah. When he could have let that just evaporate into the ether and everyone would have forgot about it. He doubled down on it almost to say, I don't care. Well, they or all have. Hear, or I didn't hear. I, I either didn't hear the outrage or I don't care about the outrage. And that's just not the politically smart thing to do. And yes, it may be Bernie Sanders is keeping it real, but this is a political game. And we have to be able to keep it real while being masters of the political game, which means you yes, can yes. keep it real mm -hmm. without doubling down. Just be smarter than them and say the same exact thing in a smarter way. Um, that's one thing that he bothered me on. Uh, the other thing that it, it little that bothers me is that um, he has not, when he got asked at the debate, uh, when he got asked the next morning by on Sunday morning on State of the Union by the same moderator to repeat uh, to answer the question of what Hillary Clinton has done um, that that seems like a quid pro quo, he had a second opportunity to answer it and he didn't do any better. Right. He 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 alluded to the bankruptcy bill and, and that's all. He, he just briefly alluded to it instead of 
putting a nail in the in the political calf coffin of Hillary Clinton. He could have nailed her there and he didn't. And, and I think some of it, some of it is being stubborn. Some of it is being just, you know, um, not being ageist. But once you get a certain age, you don't give a you don't give a damn. Mm-hmm. Right. And you're not yeah, going to, you know, people could tell you things and you're stubborn and you're like, I don't care. I'm just going to do what I know how to do. And I know a lot of people love that about Bernie Sanders, but revolution has to gain power <laughs> and to gain power. <laughs> you got to put some true. people out. Yeah. Revolution without power is just talking. And so sometimes he's going to have to play the political game smarter than anyone else. Um, well, this is not, this is not, this is not my heart. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, right? Like, you're not in Kansas anymore. Bernie would not out of Vermont anymore. anymore. Yeah, like, like, you have to adapt. You have to grow your change. That doesn't mean that he has to be like someone other than who he is. We're not saying you have to like not be yourself, put on a caricature. But yeah. at the same time, I mean, he said it perfectly the week he came out swinging, like, nah, I don't, you know, she's not qualified if when he came out swinging, he's like, I'm tired of being beaten up. Like, okay, yes. You even said it before. He needs a little bit more like, you know, chutzpah, so to speak, yeah. right? Yeah. In his in his game. And then he started getting pushed back. Like, look, this is the most formidable political machine in the last like 40, 50 years or so, right? Like you said, it's, you know, the most formidable political family since the Kennedys. I yeah. mean, it's definitely like they are the Democratic Party. When you look at who they are connected to, when you look at how people they have hired, given their start in politics, they have lined up every single favor imaginable. Every single secret is probably being held over somebody's head to yeah. to pull this out, to pull this win out, right? My thing, my thing is this, like, if if you can... I don't want to say play dirty, but the best thing I can give you is Master Windu from Star Wars. Like you have to be able to walk that fine line between the light and the dark, right? Between the, the uh, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. Like you have to be able to get there and not cross over and lose the essence of who you are. Because if you're not willing to push the envelope and to fight against um, against propaganda, <laughs> then you're going to lose the fight against propaganda because propaganda is so powerful. We can't sit back and understand the power and the efficacy of propaganda and not compete with it, right? If they're going to compete, Agreed. if yeah. they're going to compete for the wrong thing using propaganda, then can we not compete for the right thing using a better form of it, a more sincere, I mean, just, we have to be able to take their weapons and use them for good and not lose our soul in the process. And not everybody is up to that. And I think Bernie Sanders is one of those guys that's like, he's not willing to compromise at all. And and sometimes that shows up in in his prep. It shows up in his presentation and it's a strength, but in a race against somebody like Hillary Clinton, being an honest person, so honest is a damn Mm -hmm. weakness. You gotta be able to beat somebody like Hillary Clinton and you can't beat somebody it's not no. I think I think like I agree with what you're saying about the age or maybe it's like an old time like I think that we say now I'm gonna say something and if any of y'all quote me out of context I'm gonna come for you seriously <laughs> I think there is a little chauvinism on his part and I say that because I think he's old school I'm about to explain myself I think he's old school like you respect women you know you let them have like the certain way you let them go first you do this you give deference like like you know what I'm saying like he yeah. I think to some extent he's treating her with kind of like nice gloves because she's the woman you're supposed to show us respect you're supposed to do this like nah she coming for you dude like you got yeah. you got a face you got to square up with her like just like guys are taught not to hit women which is a good thing you're not supposed to hit women <laughs> but at the same time, this, this is like one of my favorite movies is Girl Fight, right? Well, Michelle Rodriguez. Now, y'all may not have seen that, but that's like Michelle Rodriguez, like breakthrough first movie. It's about um, a couple, you know, two Puerto Rican kids living in, living in Brooklyn in the projects. And she's a boxer and she ends up having to fight her boyfriend. And, and he's just like, I'm not fighting no girl. Like, I don't care. I'm not fighting no girl. She's like, but I'm a boxer. You got to fight me. That's the same type of situation we have here. Mm-hmm. Like, if you got somebody, we can't, we can't, I think Bernie, to some extent, lets the fact that Hillary is a woman get the best of me, best of him. I, I think, think it, it, I think it knocks him off his A game to some extent, particularly when they start calling him sexist, because I know that that probably hurts his feelings because he has really tried so hard 
you know what I'm saying, to not be a sexist man. He's tried so hard to be egalitarian, and I think it hurts his feelings, so he backs off. But I you can't do that. that. I think of um I don't think of that movie. I think of Harlem Nights and uh, the pink Okay. Toe, where where uh <laughs> where Vera, <laughs> me in the pinky toe. <laughs> I'm gonna whip your ass quick. Uh but anyway, when um when when they were fighting and she was beating his ass and he was like, I'm not gonna hit you, Vera, and he ended up having to knock the shit out of her because you can sit there and get your head beat all the day as long as you want to. But if you're if whatever fight you're engaged in, you better be engaged in or else you're gonna lose. Let's take a pause for a station break. All right. Um, this is the Benjamin Dixon show. I want you to click the subscribe button. We crossed over 9,000 subscribers today, ladies and gentlemen. Thank Yay. you so much for all of your support. I want to thank you for watching and tuning in and being a part of this. We want to hit 10,000. So we want to hit 10,000 before the end of May. So we got a whole month. Help us hit that. If you like what we're doing, I want you to go over to patreon.com forward slash the BPD show. And I want you to take a minute to, to pledge a dollar. Five dollars. Somebody out there, I see. I'm. Li I look in the audience. Somebody in the audience right now. I believe it. No, I mean, let me stop that. Uh, but pledge a dollar. Pledge whatever you can. Help us build the platform. Next week, I'm excited to be hosting um, Harvey J. K., the author of uh, the Four Freedoms. I, you can't really see because of the lighting. Um, but the Four Freedoms. I'll share it on Twitter. He'll be here on Tuesday, um, and uh, I'm looking forward to that conversation because the book has been great so far. I'm not through with it yet, Harvey, because it's been a hell of a week. I, I've been telling everybody all week how how much I messed up. I've never messed up on my job before, and I finally messed up, so it's been hard to read. Um, but I'm going to finish it this weekend, and we'll be discussing it. Um, and I want you to be here uh, if you want to look them up or if you want to get the book. Definitely check it out because it's a great read. Um, and I want you guys here on Tuesday when I t speak with Harvey.